Hey friends, this is Vikas over here and this is Rear Genius. So today we will uh, see how to interface SCSR04 ultrasonic sensor module with Raspberry Pi by using Java. And for this we are going to use the Pi4j library to access the GPIOs of the Pi. So we will connect the sensor module to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and we will write a simple Java application that will interact with the module and it will print out the distance in CM onto the console. So if you are interested in G like GUI application, you can certainly go ahead with that by using Swing or Adobe anything you are like familiar with. But in this tutorial, I'll just focus on the console mode. And again, if you are new to running Java application over Raspberry Pi, you can check my earlier video on this for which I have given link down below in the description. So let's first connect the module to the Pi and then we'll work around the app to get this done. So being said that, let's get started guys. Uh, so guys, this is the ultrasonic module that we are going to use. Uh, that is the SCSR04 module with our Raspberry Pi 2. So let's see what are the pins over here. Uh, this has four pins basically. The ground, echo pin, trigger pin and PCC. Uh, so this is like a ground, then echo, trigger, then PCC. So as you know ground and PCC are connected to like ground and this is connected to plus 5 volt. So if you are not using external power supply you can definitely connect to the plus 5 volt output on the Raspberry Pi module. Uh, then you can connect ground directly to the Raspberry Pi and over here echo and trigger can be connected to any digital pins so basically echo is the output pin and trigger is the input pin uh, so in your program you need to define the pin connected to echo as like input for the raspberry pi and pin connected to trigger as output for raspberry pi then over here how it works is you need to provide a 10 microsecond pulse onto the input pin or the trigger pin and this model over here will throw out 8 pulses of frequency 40 kilohertz and it will like receive the bounce break waves from the objects so right now let's say we are pointing towards the wall it will uh, first throw the eight pulses and it will uh, receive the pulses and accordingly it will give us the output on the echo pin and this output high level duration will be proportional to the total time of travel that means the time required from like uh, the wave transmitter over here and till the wave is received back okay so this module has accuracy of 2 cm to like around 400 cm so let's see how to connect this uh, module over here to the raspberry pi 2 so to do that i can use any two gpi of raspberry pi that supports digital input and output but, but for my case i have used gpi 0 and GPIO 2 ok so you can go ahead with any other pin uh, depending upon your project and pin requirement but uh, keep in mind that this pin numbering over here is in accordance with the pi 4j pin numbering so if you are using other libraries or you are developing in python and all or uh, like you were developing in python and you are like getting into java and all Click check the image down below linked in my description to get the exact pin number that is to be used in your Java application. So I can connect uh, let's say I am using this as GPR0 as the trigger or trigger uh, like output for the Raspberry Pi and it connecting it as input to the ultrasonic module. So as it is 3.3 volt compatible but uh, my ultrasonic module is 5 volt compatible but as it is the input to the 5 volt module I can connect it directly I don't need any level shifter because this 5 volt circuit over here will uh, consider 3.3 as 1 and uh, like it is under its threshold in range of its threshold but this echo pin over here which has been connected to like GPIO 2 has to go through a like level shifter circuit 
So for simplicity you can use uh, like a voltage divider circuit consisting of couple of resistors but to be on safe side you can go ahead with any MOSFET uh, based or any other TTL based uh, like level shifters. So for this I am going to use the 2N7000 N channel MOSFET based level shifter. So if you are not uh, like not acquainted with this level shifter you can check out my earlier video around this how to design a level shifter using 2N7000 and channel MOSFET. Uh, so this is all with it, uh, like all the circuit connections and all. So let's quickly connect the circuit and we'll get back to the Eclipse IDE and we'll work on our application. Uh, so guys, I have connected everything as per I said earlier. And uh, over here, the SCSR04 ultrasonic module is connected to a breadboard and all things are like connected to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm not using any separate power supply for this model over here. It is being powered by the Raspberry Pi only. And over here, this circuit is the level shifter circuit that is based on the 2N7000 and channel MOSFET. Okay. And uh, over here, I have put a measurement tape over here so that we can uh, check out the uh, like calculated distance with the actual distance. So let's get back to the ID and quickly work around our code and we'll test it out. So guys, to start with, let's first download the Pi4j Java library that is required to access the GPIO pins of Raspberry Pi by using Java. So to do that, uh, open up your browser and head over to pi4j.com slash downloads. Actually, I have mentioned this link in the description. So you can uh, use the latest release or the snapshot builds. So let's go ahead with the snapshot build. Just download it. So let's skip till it gets finished. Now, after the download has finished, just extract this zip file over here. Okay. I just extracted. Yep. Now open up Eclipse and let's create a new project new java project basically so let's name it ultrasonic sensor facing hyphen code i'll uh, just store it wherever it need or you can go ahead with the default workspace location i'll just choose any folder on my workspace okay then just click on finish now right click on this go ahead with build path configure build path then click on add external jars and over here navigate to your downloaded library folder and select pipe4j code.jar under the uh, subfolder lib okay then hit open click on ok so we are all set to go then create a new class file uh, let's say i'll create a class file that is main hit on add publish static void method then just copy my code from my github repository and paste it over here okay so again oh, this all these instructions and all can be found on my earlier video on running java application on raspberry pi and as well as like accessing gpio by using the pipe4j library videos uh, so guys let's go through the code so over here it's a simple like main class definition and all and i have defined two pins that is one output pin that is the sensor trigger pin then GPIO pin digital input that is the sensor echo pin. So these pins are connected to the respective pins of the ultrasonic module. And over here we have created a GPIO object that is one instance of the GPIO factory. Then there is a simple main function that runs this run function over here. Then we have defined the sensor trigger input pin and the sensor echo pin. Okay. 
that is to the pin GPL0 which is configured as output and uh, the second one the echo pin is GPL02 which is configured as input pin and as it is input we have defined pin pull resistance as down so if you have used other pins you can certainly modify over here then we have used a while true loop that means it will execute forever then we have made the trigger pin low for a certain time then to give a pulse to the ultrasonic module we have pulled the pin high and with a delay of one microsecond approximately that is thread dot slip of 0.01 millisecond then we are, we are again putting the pulling the pin low the sensor trigger pin over here you can check out then we have over here just checked the uh, like up until the echo pin is low that means we have not received the echo till now then we have created a variable that is the start time and it takes the system current time up to some nanoseconds so for better precision we have used nano time then it again continues with a while loop until the echo pin is high then we have again considered the end time as the like nano uh, nano time system nano uh, system time actually so this are uh, both times over your start time and time difference gives us the time that the pulse has been high okay then we are printing out the time difference by one e3 that is actually converting this nanosecond to millisecond by two uh, then divided by 29.1 to give us the distance in centimeter and it is slipping for one second and again it continues after every one second in a while loop uh, so let's uh, like compile it once as you know and it certainly gives us the error because this program is not meant for our windows system as we are running uh, this id over on windows system mm -hmm and uh, don't worry this is nothing so just over here click right click then click on export select runnable java file click on next and from here select the particular main file that is like for us is the main class then ultrasonic sensor interface code uh, there is the like project name then you just select a jar file that is to be exported onto and you can select copy required libraries or any over here but uh, again if you are, if you are new to this please check my earlier tutorial on this like how to use java program on raspberry pi so click on finish okay this i am having earlier one that way then check on your exported destination you will find two files the file name dot jar and file name underscore live so as i have exported it onto my desktop i'll find test dot jar over here because i given the i've given the name test then test underscore live this is over here okay now open up winscp or whatever tool you are using to transfer your files from your pc to the raspberry pi via ftp so just check on the test.jar test underscore leaf and click on upload over here i have used winscp okay now you can find these two files are on our raspberry pi so let's go ahead with uh, like putty and uh, to run the particular application you need to like put a command sudo java hyphen jar then the path that is under desktop slash the file name test dot jar uh, so you can see it is printing out the distance in cm oh i didn't modify this uh, it has to be like distance not time uh, so over here distance I can make it 
this same okay again let's export it let's upload it once again but it's a jar file okay. and run it yeah you can see it is putting out the distance in same over here and uh, the code is actually a single class file only so nothing complex over here it's a simple file uh, that you need to run and uh, need to compile and run in your pipe so let's uh, like uh, place our sensor at different distance and we'll check out if distance is uh, like getting right and is how much accurate with the actual one. Uh, so I have placed my sensor now at 40 cm and I'm getting a distance around 39 cm on my console. So let's vary it or let's say place it at 30 cm and let's see the distance calculated by the java application now you can see when i placed at 30 it's quite accurate right now and uh, printing out around 30 cm so you can just test out yourself uh, this is uh, again considering uh, like uh, the wall distance and all so the result is uh, like quite okay because this set of over here I am having is not quite that much accurate from where I am measuring actually. Uh, so that's all with this guys. Uh, hope you have liked it. Please hit the thumbs up button if you have liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time with my next video.